just keep thinking to myself, where do you have to go? What is popping YouTube? So, so in today's video, this is a sixth grade advice video for all of the new coming middle schoolers, sixth graders, hi. What it do? How it going? Um, this is supposed to help you. If this doesn't help, I am so sorry. I'm really, this is not like really planned. It's, it is in my YouTube book. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure it is, wait. It says Monday, I'm supposed to make a sixth grade advice video. Um, I did not plan out like what I'm supposed to be saying in this video. So if it sounds very rambly and very non-understandable, I'm sorry, but I'm really just doing this to help. And I have to make this quick so I can post it for y'all. So let's just jump right into this video because I hate long intros. This everything to me. He from the jungle. I know y'all saw that intro. It was crispy. It was fresh. You know what I'm saying? But so let's get straight into this video. So first thing that sixth graders should automatically be on top on is your grades. I I'm going into the eighth grade, so sixth and seventh grade, I was not on top of my grades. I will admit it, I'm, I wasn't. I really wasn't, and it affected me, and it gave me headaches, and I cried. And grades is just such a big part of school life now. Like, that's really what everyone cares about, your grades. And they care about grades and all that stuff, and hundreds and nineties, and yeah. So the first, I, I think I, I, I probably have about three tips for you guys when it comes to grades. So maybe four. Um, the first thing I would say is set a goal for yourself. What I mean by that is what kind of grades do you want to receive? Um, my mom, I know that I have to get a 90 or better. If I get like an 80, she'll be like, okay, fine, I'll take it. But she really wants me to strive for a 90 or better. Same with my dad. Um, that is something that you want to strive for. Um, this year going to eighth grade, I want to try to get an 85 or better because, you know, it really helps. It really brings your grade average up and it's so important. Two, extra help. I don't know if all schools have this, but at my school, extra help is, just, is well, it's what, it, it's what it is. You can go in the morning or you can go in the afternoon and it's so helpful. You can get projects done, homework just all of that stuff done during extra help. And when I'm telling you it's so useful, it is so useful. It is so useful. It, it like extra help really helped me get through seventh, like towards the end of seventh grade before, you know, all this coronavirus and quarantine hit. It really helped and I never took advantage of it. And what I mean by that is like, I didn't really care for extra help. When I heard about extra help in sixth grade, I probably went twice. And that was just to study on a test and that was about it. I didn't really care for it. I didn't think I needed it at the time. And in all honesty, I did. I really needed extra help. It was so important, but I just didn't care for it. Um, in seventh grade, I started to use it a lot more and it helped. It really did help because once teachers start seeing that you're invested in your work and that you're gonna start taking your work seriously, I never realized this for some reason, they will start helping you a little more. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be so honest with you. They'll, they'll do things like you get five extra points for coming to extra help, but they won't tell you that like the day before. You know, like bonus points. So okay, if you write um, a beautiful poem, let's pretend like this is a poem. If you write a beautiful poem on World War II, whatever. If you write a beautiful poem or world, on World War II, I will give you 10 extra bonus points on your next test. Use them bonus points. I, I look, look at me in my eyes. Look at me in my eyes. Use those bonus points. They help you so much and they boost up your average like crazy. I, I don't like doing extra work and I've always been like that. It's a horrible trait that I need to... Um, I guess yeah, I just need to start I need to start doing extra work bonus points going to extra help will really help your average because even some teachers they won't tell you that if you go to extra help you'll get five extra points on a test 
what they do is they'll be like, you know, extra help is useful. You can come to extra help for your test tomorrow. And then at the and then the next day when you have the test, they'll be like, raise your hand if you want to extra help. You raise their hand. They say all of you guys get five extra points on your test. Then all of a sudden people want to come to extra help because you're getting five extra points on your test. It's helpful, it's useful, and it's helpful, it's useful and it's needed so just take advantage of extra help and bonus points i think that was my second tip the third tip is understand what kind of learner you are um some people learn by hearing some people and by listening some people learn by visual some people learn by someone getting in their face and yelling at them and that forces them to learn learn understand how you learn so i am a i am a visual learner which means that I learn better if it's put into my face. If you are only talking, if you're only talking and you're not talking with energy and you're being boring, I'm not going to listen to you because I don't care what you're saying because it's not entertaining me. But if you talk with energy and like, yeah, and then you start showing me some stuff on the board, I'll learn. That's just how I am and that's just how I work. Um, not a lot of teachers are like that because they're tired, they're stressed. Like my mother, she's a teacher, she's tired, she's stressed. I, I've never seen her really work in the classroom, so I don't really know for sure how she works. But what I do know is that teachers are very tired and stressed. And it's not easy for them to get up there and start learning and start being excited and have a bunch of energy and make all these visual, and visual slides and stuff. So if you are a visual learner, you just really have to pay attention. And um, sixth and seventh grade for me was not easy because I didn't really, I knew I was a visual learner, but I didn't understand how to take my visual learning and make it into something important. That's why with online school, the last quarter, I did great. I think I got a 92 average. It's not great, but based on, I've, I've never, I think, ugh, all of my marking period grades have never been less than um, like an 85, I think. Marking period, I think I ended off with like a 91. Then the last two marking periods were nothing less than an 85. And then my last marking period was a 92, which was the fourth marking period. And my fourth marking period, I was doing um, online school. It's visual. I can see what I'm learning. I can look at it and like put it in my brain and be like, okay, this is how it has to work. And that is really how I aced with, I ended the year with a 92 average. That, I'm sorry, that is so important. You have to understand how to make visual learning work for you. Even if that means you have a notebook in class, it says my last name here. You have a visual, you have a, a notebook all the time and you write down notes and you draw stuff out. If that's what you have to do, then that is what you have to do. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to understand how you learn so you will do better in school. Okay, I just killed a bug. Um, I think those seen tips, maybe four, I don't so now that we're out of grades now this is the fun part this is gonna help you survive besides grades this is gonna help you survive literally for like kids okay this is gonna help you really get through middle school help you understand your first year so since i was um the new kid the the um who are you type kid it was hard for me to make friends. I am a naturally outgoing person. I'm crazy. I'll bump my head into the wall and then laugh. I'm that kind of person. But if I don't know who you are, I will I, I will walk around like this. Hi. My voice is low. It's deep. It's... I'm telling you right now, it was so hard for me to open up if people won't come to you you gotta come to them you don't you can't expect people to want to walk up to you and be like hi who are you no you're not gonna always get that i got that probably twice i had two friends at the beginning of the year and basically my relationship just kept basing 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 off of that because 
of the fact that my friends knew other friends and they come up to me and be like, oh, you're the one she keeps talking about and blah, blah, blah. And then that's how I got lunch friends. That's how I got people to be my partner when we did partner work. You really just have to come to them. They're not, they're not always gonna come to you. Okay, okay. Um, I did have um, a cousin who already had multiple friends and I was like, and I normally just sat with them, but I didn't know them and they didn't really want to get to know me. And I really just sat there and I didn't, I was, just, I was really quiet and I didn't acknowledge them because I didn't want to get to know them because when I first met them that first day, I was like, nah, no, no, go away, back up, too close, too close. No, I don't like it. I was I was just so distant from them. You know, I, I did hang out with them, though. Like, I laugh, I chuckle, I play around with them. But when I see them walking down the hallway today, I don't say anything to them. And it's because I didn't try to get to know them. And I'm not saying that's a big mistake that I made because I don't think I try to get to know them even now. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say off this story is you should try to get to know people before you judge them. Now, even what I know today, they are great people. There's nothing wrong with them, but I wouldn't be friends with them yet. I wouldn't be friends with them just because I know that our personalities really wouldn't collide. <sighs> I'm out of breath. Um, Get to, like, try to become friends with people before, try to get to know them before you judge them. At, don't judge people based on stories and what you see. Even though what you see probably won't be the best view. And I know people have thought about that with me because people have told me, like, I didn't like you because you were loud and blah. And I was like, and now they're friends with me. You know what I'm saying? So just don't base people off of what you see and what you hear and actually get to know them before you say, I don't want to be friends with you. Now, I this also sounds very hypocritical because I was like that, as I said, but I learned to um become friends with people before i hear and yeah you get the point um okay i think that's all all the tips i have on friends just be just come to you sometimes you have to come to them without them coming to you and and don't mm, don't focus on what you hear and what you see and focus on what kind of person they are so that's ways that you can get friends Easily, it worked for me, and I have a pretty good amount of friends now that I love unconditionally. Um, this topic gets me tight, okay? This is what to do and not to do in the hallways. I really don't know how to, how to, I guess, I don't know, put this without sounding mean. Because even thinking about what they do gets me mad. You are going to be around 7th and 8th graders. If you don't, so like at my school, we have a 6th grade and a 7th grade wing, okay? Um, obviously, that's where the 6th graders stay. They, like, recently just built that area. And then the 7th and 8th grade wing is where I am currently. I've been there for a year going on, too. Um, I'm in contact with 7th and 8th graders. Not all of them are going to be nice. You're going to make a lot of them mad. And I don't know how to make the how to make them not be mad, but this is just how I stayed out of seventh and eighth grade drama. So let's get into it. So um one of the things you should not do in the hallways, especially if you're around seventh and eighth graders. Don't run up and down the hallways hunched over. Like, I don't know if I can show y'all, but don't go like this. Hold your backpack if you have to wear a string bag. Sometimes we have to wear a string bag. Don't do that and don't start running across the hallway. That gets me so mad because I just keep thinking to myself, where do you have to go to the point where you have to run like you're a hunchback whale and start running? I don't understand. Because I never, I didn't even do that in sixth grade. I probably speed walked a couple of times. Definitely. I definitely speed walked a couple of times. But I never sprinted across the hallway. Don't run in the hallways. It's not cute. It's not cool. No one runs in the hallways. Actually, that statement is incorrect. 
okay it's just annoying and it's a pain and blah all right just don't do it don't do it okay like y'all little oh y'all little kids just run <laughs> it just gets me so irritated i hate it it's annoying just don't do it it will real it will really help because some people especially in seventh and eighth grade they will literally cut cut in front of you and be like can you not do that like can you not and they'll be very mean to you and they'll tell you to not do that i won't do that because i don't like it annoys me but i can understand why you're trying to do it but just don't do it it's annoying it's mm, 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 just don't thank you two if you see a fight happening in the seventh and eighth grade wing or whatever or if you see a fight happening between a seventh and eighth grader or if you see a fight happening period walk away some i know a lot of y'all gonna have the urge to stand there and be like oh my god what, what's going on what's going on that it's annoying like you can you know i've probably witnessed about five fights and i probably just walked but I kept looking just to see what was going on because you, you, there's no way that you're not going to look. If you're not going to look, I would be very surprised. But fights cause such like such um, chaos in the hallways. I like to call it hallway traffic. They cause so much traffic in the hallways and it's annoying. And when you're trying to get to class, it's so annoying don't stand there don't pull out your phone don't nothing because if someone sees you if an adult sees you they might call you into the office and ask what you saw in that fight or you could get in trouble by a teacher for a recording instead of going to class there's just so many things that could happen if you decide to focus on focus on the fight that's happening instead of going to class now, I'm not trying to say be that person that like only goes to class and don't talk to anyone in the hallways and don't because you know like while I'm going to class I'll probably stop and wait for my friend to go get them stuff for their locker so you know we can bounce and go to class together but don't be that kind of person that stops and causes chaos in the hallways and it's like yo 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 look, look at the fight that stop it's annoying it's it's it just makes it it makes it bigger and bigger and it makes the crowd bigger and makes it harder for people that are trying to go to class get to class and it's just annoying so just stop and don't do it thank you um two don't start fights in the hallways <laughs> don't start fights in the hallways there's no point of starting a fight in the hallway um i'm not saying start it outside because that's also not smart either but don't say start. I'm not saying started after school either. But just don't. Don't start fights. It's really not worth it. Because of the fact that there's no need for you to start a fight. Y'all can do a, a fight with your words. But starting a fight in school, I just find it annoying. Um, I don't know if any boys are watching this. If you are a boy that is watching this, hi. Hi, how you doing? Um, please don't be the person that feels the need to play tag around the whole hallway. Please don't. I don't. What's the point? Why? Why? Because it's annoying because I have, I, I definitely got hurt maybe, maybe five times because the boys decided to play tag around the hallways. And what I mean by that is don't, don't have some, don't start running, sprinting, and then you got 16 other people sprinting after you, right? And, and then they're like, oh my God, and then they want to hit people. And then you get mad when someone's like, can you stop? Don't be that kind of person. There's no need for you to be that kind of person because what's the point of being that kind of person? That's what I'm, that's really what I'm trying to say. Like, what is the point of you trying to be the kind of person in trouble your sixth grade year is so important. That's why I'm saying don't get into fights. Don't get in trouble because that's really how people are going to see you for the rest of your time until maybe you get to eighth grade. I guess if you get in trouble a couple of times, it won't be as bad because they know that you're not doing it because you're like, like a troublemaker. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm like, don't get into fights. Don't start fights. Don't be in fights. Don't run up and down the hallway. Just no. Really? Your sixth grade year for you is literally just to go to class get out of class have fun every now and then and that's about it i'm pretty sure i already talked about lunch in the beginning of this video but lunch is how do i put this 
lunch is annoying it's very annoying i hate lunch i hate it a lot and let me explain why my school they there are extremely long lunch lines and what i mean by that is the lunch lines will go out the door they're extremely long i recommend that you bring home food um now this is not this is a sixth grade advice bring home food bring bring home bring food from home sometimes like if you know okay your first week examine the lunchroom what i mean by that is tell like let's say monday is pizza day and tuesday is taco tuesday right on pizza day if you see a lot of people that are on the line for pizza but then not a lot of people that are on the line for taco tuesday then examine that and keep that in your head and say okay so on pizza day let me bring lunch lunch from home and on taco tuesday i'll just get lunch if you don't like taco tuesday at my school we have a salad line a hot line and a snack line so basically like uh, basically just be like okay that means that i can go on the that means that i can go on the hot line maybe or i can try the salad line so just examine the lunchroom and understand how the lunchroom works and understand when food is okay when you should bring home when you should bring food from home and all that stuff I too this is like something that i feel is so uh, annoying i guess i have been in about two i guess arguments with people who get mad because i'm sitting in their lunch spot and what i mean by that is i would go and I would sit, and if I see, like, when you see an open table, you go to that open table. If you like that open table, has enough seat for all you and your friends, you're going to go to that table because it's open. It's there. You can use it. So do not catch attitudes with people. Do not get angry with people because they're sitting in your seats, okay? It doesn't matter. Just find a new seat. It's annoying. But if somebody, but if somebody does throw your stuff across the room or picks up your stuff and drops it or something like that, just so they can sit in that specific spot, then that's when you can like address it. But don't, don't be that kind of person that's that is that be disrespectful and throws people's stuff on the floor because the lunch floor is dirty and if someone did it to you you would be pissed you would be mad you'd be angry so don't do it to them okay okay just moral of the story your sixth grade year is so important because it's how people will view you for the rest of your time in middle school and if you're high school in middle school and elementary school connected that's how they'll view you in high school your middle school year is so important. You have to be on top of your grades. So if teachers talk about you with other teachers and other grades, then they'll be like, oh, she's a good student. So if she slips every now and then, I'll just take away her grade. I'll just take away that bad grade and it's not that big of a deal. Cause I know that some teachers would do that. Or, and also it's like, don't get in trouble. Don't pick fights because then that will also be your reputation for the school year. Like, people will just base you like, oh, she's the one that gets into fights. Oh, she's the one that gets in trouble. You don't want that. You don't want people to base you off of, like, little things that you do. And the last one, try to make friends. They're not always going to come to you. You sometimes have to come to them and base people off of what you know about. But don't base people off of what you hear and what you see and base them off of how they act towards you so that is the end of this video um i hope you guys enjoyed i hope this was understandable i hope i didn't rant too long okay i will definitely edit this video because it is 35 minutes 36 minutes long and we don't have that kind of time so i hope you guys enjoyed this video make sure you like comment and subscribe and comment down below like what was your school year like like what was your like sixth grade school year like i'm very intrigued to know that because i don't like I it was hard for me but I want to know how hard how easy like comment down below what your first school what your first year in middle school was like 
and I hope you guys enjoyed this video and now enjoy the new outro because I I I I um I don't know basically I just did a really good job on the outro so deuces uh -huh.